Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I'm the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful sunset scape mountain range silhouette type vibe with some new alcohol inks from my friend Jen with Jen's Crafted Gems. Now at the time of me filming this video, those inks are sold out, but she does plan to restock really soon. So be sure to check her out on social media so you can be the first to get information on those restocks. That's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. Guys, so as usual, we're starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that I've already spray painted with a flat white spray paint. I'm using a 20 ounce skinny straight from Craft Haven today. And here are the alcohol inks that we'll be using. I'm using a gradient of like black to yellow with all the blues, purples, reds, and in-betweens. I love this starter kit that Jen has with her inks because it has all the colors you need to create so many different looks. We're gonna be using a black, a dark blue, violet, a purple, a dark red, a lighter red, a pink, and a yellow. To apply our inks, I'll be using a magic eraser, and I'm gonna tear off a small piece for each color. We want every color to have its own little sponge so we don't muddle up any of the colors and mix them. We're gonna start off with our darkest color up at the top first, which is our black. So I'm gonna squirt a few drops of the ink into its own little sponge, and I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap onto our cup. I don't want to have a lot of straight lines or harsh edges to this design, so you'll see me come down randomly here and there. Don't worry too much about blending in the first stage as we lay our initial round of colors. We'll have time to blend later if we need to. Once I've gone as far down with the black as I wanna go for now, I'm gonna move on to our next darkest color, which is this violet blue. Again, we're just gonna squirt a few drops into the sponge and work it through the black a little bit and moving a little further down our cup. It's important to try and envision how much space each of those colors is going to take in the gradient so we don't go down too far. Remember, we can always add more, we just can't take away. The only time I reach for a little bit of my rubbing alcohol is if I feel like I need to stretch my inks further or if I need to blend a little more. You will find that these inks are, number one, they're super pigmented, but number two, if you're used to working with different alcohol inks uh, or some like more basic ones, these have a higher ink content, so they're gonna seem drier, if you will. So you may have to dilute them on your sponge a little bit with the rubbing alcohol, but I don't like to add too much because I don't wanna take away from just how vibrant these inks are. I've compared the same design to one that I made with some Tim Holtz alcohol inks, and the difference is astonishing. I will show you that later on in the video. But anyhow, we're gonna keep moving on uh, with this pouncing technique, just pouncing up and down around the cup with the colors, moving into the past color and then bringing down. You don't need to spend a whole lot of time with this. We're going for a very abstract look, so definitely don't shoot for perfection. As I move further down into our gradient here, you'll see me reach back for colors that we did further up in the gradient. So I'm in the red section right now, but I'm gonna go back and kind of blend with a little bit of the purple. I'm gonna pull the red all the way up into the blue, but we don't wanna mix colors too much because we wanna avoid things from looking muddled or messy, all right? We can always clean stuff up with a clean bit of the sponge and some rubbing alcohol. So make sure that you reserve a small section of sponge uh, with no inks on it at all. In case you run into an area that starts to look a little too messy, blot it down with just some plain rubbing alcohol and no ink and it'll kind of clear things up a bit for you. We're gonna continue this process all the way through all of our colors, basically just pouncing on 
a row of that color and then pulling it up through the last color to blend moving back and forth between a couple colors at a time to really get everything organically blended and looking beautiful you don't want to go too much with this though because it can start to look messy uh less is kind of more on this and you don't want to fuss with this to the point where you're just frustrated at some point with these i have to just set it down and walk away and accept it for what it is and that the organic kind of messy beauty of this is i think what makes this look so special so don't get too much in your head on it just have a good time let the inks kind of carry you where they need to go all right and they it just comes together so beautifully and it's like instant gratification if you're somebody who likes tie-dye and things like that or watercolor this project is right up your alley after about 20 minutes of messing with this <laughs> i was done and i just set it down to dry overnight you do not need to seal your alcohol inks uh, with something like this. You can just let them fully dry. I like to let them dry overnight to be on the safe side, but I think a few hours in a pretty dry, warm room would be sufficient. Once our inks are fully dry, we're ready to apply our first coat of epoxy. I'm gonna mix a little bit of glitter into our epoxy. I've got 30 milliliters here that I've already mixed, and we wanna add just a small amount of glitter not even enough to cover the top of our epoxy here see that's just the amount we need don't add too much because we can always add two but we can't take away and you can very easily overpower this design by adding too much glitter in at this step we just want to add enough to add a little bit of sparkle to that night sky i'm going to apply this like i normally would i'm using Illumilite's amazing fast set so this is a fast drying epoxy it's going to be ready to move on to our next step in just under four hours here's what we have so far so pretty i love it now remember your dry time on your epoxy will vary based on the brand and type that you're using all right so now that this layer is dry i'm ready to move on to my sanding i've got an 80 grit sanding block here and i'm going to do my regular sanding routine around the top rim we're going to sand down just a little bit to expose a fine line of stainless steel this is where our final coats of epoxy will adhere to to create the seal for our cup this way we're establishing the seal on the outer rim rather than the very top rim where it's more vulnerable once we're done with our sanding, I'm gonna wash this off with some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And now we're ready for the next step. I've got some painter's tape here and we are going to create our own mountain silhouette. I'm gonna take some of the sticky away from my painter's tape by running against my clothes and my fingers. We've only got one layer of epoxy over that alcohol ink, so we don't wanna pull anything too sticky or um, be too aggressive with that epoxy in case it pulls off of our tumbler, okay? Once we've got that tape laid down, just about a couple inches from the bottom rim of our cup, I've got a white colored pencil. You can use a pen, colored pencil, whatever you want. And I'm gonna draft out my own little mountain range here. I'm gonna take my craft knife and I'm just gonna run that along the lines that we just drew, trying to rotate my knife in my hand as I move along. You don't wanna to press too firmly down because we don't wanna score our epoxy because that could damage what we've got going on here. After I've cut all those lines, I'm gonna remove the bottom portion of where we cut to make like a stencil for where we're going to spray paint. I'm going to cover the remainder of my cup with some saran wrap and I'm going to spray paint that bottom section there with some flat black spray paint. Just as soon as my paint starts to dry, I'm going to remove that masking tape, being careful not to disturb our paint. I'm going to let that paint dry for about 20 or 30 minutes until it's completely dry to the touch. And then we will move on to apply our decal. Now I have to apologize because this particular file that I'm using for this Tumblr is no longer for sale. The artist who created this file, her shop is closed. I searched everywhere, couldn't find it. I'm really, really sorry. Um, but if you search this quote on Etsy, you will 
surely find something cute that's similar. I love this quote. It says, to the stars who listened and the dreams that were answered. I think I said that right. Uh, this is from A Court of Thorn and Roses. It's a beautiful book series by Sarah J. Moss. Again, I hope I pronounced her name right. Uh, but I just finished reading this book. Now, I made cup with this same quote a couple years ago and everybody told me oh my gosh love that quote love that book you have to read it and I didn't listen and boy was I wrong I finally got around to reading it after I recreated a cup with this quote again <laughs> just a couple weeks ago I read that book in like four or five days I was obsessed such a great book, you guys. I will link the book down below if you want to read it. I just moved on to the second book in the series. I think there's four or five books in the series, um, but amazing so far. 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> um, I did have to weed that file on the cup though because it was super stingy. Uh, <laughs> anyway, after I got the vinyl quote on there, I did use my little Posca acrylic marker with a fine point to put the stars on for extra detail. You'll also notice that I put a little uh, half inch crescent moon in the sky too, which I just cut out of regular vinyl on my Cricut using just a generic crescent moon file, all right? So pretty easy for like vinyl and paint details. Now we're ready to move on to our final coats. You guys, this cup is so easy. We can get this done in just a couple days. For my final coats, I'm using Illumilite's Amazing Clear Cast Plus. This does have an enhanced UV protective formula in it, so it's gonna keep those colors bright and beautiful for a long time. This cup took two final coats before it was totally smooth and then we were done. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I want to show you guys Jen, the creator of these gorgeous alcohol inks, opening up her cup that I made for her exactly like this one. I did a TikTok um, of me making this video and so many of you demanded a tutorial. So <laughs> here's your tutorial. But look at this sweet video of Jen opening my cup. I just love her. Thank you, Jen, for bringing us these awesome inks. We cannot wait for you to restock in June. You guys check out her website. I've got it linked down below and follow her on social media so you don't miss the alerts for those restocks. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.